On today's show, newly signed documents between Rivian and the state of Georgia show that one and a half billion dollars of state and local incentives will be offered to the truck company for building its new factory in the Peach State. Toyota and Lexus hint that they've already got an 800 volt battery system ready for future models. And the obscenity of the fossil fuel industry is on full display as Shell records its highest profits since 2008 in the first quarter of this year. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Search today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. Ahead of our stories today, I do have a quick editorial note. Due to a hospital appointment in the family this week, we actually produced and filmed this a whole day earlier than normal, so if we missed a late-breaking story from the end of the week, you'll know why. When a company chooses to build a new production facility, there's a lot of competition from different regions, all vying to entice said company in question to their part of the world. In the auto industry, that competition can result in promises of some pretty big financial incentives, especially in the US, where different states vie against one another to offer huge tax abatements and incentives. And this week, we learned just how much Rivian is getting from local and state governments in Georgia to build its new $5 billion production facility there, a $1.5 billion tax break. A total of 7,500 people are expected to be employed by the factory when it's operating at capacity, and nearly 8,000 jobs are expected to be created in local communities. Therefore, that $1.5 billion investment, the largest ever offered by the Peach State to a company, should pay dividends in the future. Simply put, the 15,500 jobs the facility will generate will represent more than $1 billion in annual labour income for Georgia. For years, the Volvo FH truck has been a mainstay of European heavy-duty trucking, and it's pretty hard to drive anywhere in Europe without seeing it or its siblings, the FM and FMX, doing a hard day's work. Now, after successfully starting the commercial launch of its FE and FL electric medium-duty trucks in Europe and the FNR Class 8 electric big rig in the US, Volvo Trucks has opened the order books for the all-electric FH, FM and FMX models. Even before order books opened, Volvo Trucks said it had more than 1,100 orders and letters of intent from customers in over 20 different countries and says it plans to begin production in the third quarter at its Tuv plant in Gothenburg, Sweden. At the moment, Norway, Germany and Sweden are Volvo Trucks' largest market for electric big rigs in Europe, but it also holds a healthy lead on the competition in North America as well. We, and many other automotive news outlets, have given Toyota just a little bit of a hard time over the years for its reticent position on electric vehicles. Yet, while Toyota has outwardly retained all-in on hydrogen fuel cell and hybrid technology to the detriment of EVs, it does appear that Toyota and its luxury arm Lexus have been busy working on next-generation EV drivetrains behind the scenes. During an international prototype drive event for the Lexus RZ450e in Barcelona, Spain this week, several outlets, including Green Car Reports, were told by Lexus chief engineer Takashi Watanabe that not only do Toyota and Lexus believe battery electric is the proper solution for both brands to hit carbon neutrality, but that the development of an 800 volt battery system is completed. We won't see it in the RZ450e, or indeed the Toyota BZ4X, but future models? Just watch this space. Electrify America, the charging network set up as part of Volkswagen's penance for Dieselgate in the US, has been gradually expanding its coverage for the past few years. And this week, we learned that its customer base has expanded too, with a massive 1.45 million electric vehicle charging sessions carried out last year across the Electrify America network. This, says the company, is equivalent to 145 million miles, 233 million kilometers driven by its customers, with 41.5 four gigawatt hours of power delivered to customers. That's responsible for the displacement of an estimated 5.7 million US gallons, 21.5 million litres of fossil fuel. The expansion of Electrify America means more people are taking long distance trips by EV, but what's perhaps most impressive is the sheer growth in 2021 compared to 2020, when just 268,000 charging sessions were recorded on the network. 
It's only been operation for a few months, but earlier this week, we learned that Tesla is reportedly looking to expand Giga Berlin and is actively looking to buy a 100-acre piece of land adjacent to the facility. However, the Green League, a German environmental group, has called for Tesla's operating license at Giga Berlin to be revoked after paint from Tesla's on-site paint shop leaked out of the facility. According to local news outlets, a total of 15,000 litres, just shy of 4,000 US gallons of paint, leaked from Tesla's Giga Berlin paint shop on April 11th. That leak was pumped out by a disposal company, but a few days later, the Green League alleges a second leak occurred. While a local state filing on the incident says the paint did not get into the sewage system or groundwater, the Green League says Tesla's license should be revoked until it completes paving around the paint shop to prevent leaks from entering the aquifer. This one could go on for a while. We've seen a gradual increase in charging speeds for EVs over the last decade, with more and more automakers bringing new models to market capable of charging at speeds in excess of 200 kilowatts. But this week, electrical equipment manufacturer ABB installed its first Terra 360 charging station, the most powerful charging station in the world to date. This new charging station was revealed in September last year and is capable of charging up to four vehicles at the same time. The name, Terra 360, comes from the fact that it can provide up to 360 kilowatts of power with its modular design capable of intelligently sharing that 360 kilowatts between each of its connected vehicles. This is so much better than its previous generation units, which may have had multiple connectors, but still only let you charge one vehicle at a time. Volvo has officially refreshed its XC40 lineup for 2023 for North America, and like its sibling, the C40 Recharge, there were a few styling nips and tweaks throughout the lineup, as well as some new trim and paint choices, and not a cow in sight. Externally, there's now a new LED light cluster. LED matrix headlight-like technology is finally legal in the US, but what's really worthy of note are some important tweaks to range per charge. When the XC40 Recharge originally debuted, it was given an official EPA range of 208 miles, 335 kilometers. The new model year variant is now rated to 223 miles, 358 kilometers. Despite this range increase, it does keep the XC40 Recharge near the bottom of the EPA ratings per charge, but I'd guess that like the Polestar 2 it shares a platform with, further tweaks might be forthcoming in the future. We loved driving the Polestar 2, a review for which you can check out below, but we haven't driven the XC40 Recharge yet. Sadness. The automotive industry is, I'm sure you know, one where there's a lot of close partnerships between different car companies. In fact, if you get enough automotive journalists in a room together, you may end up playing the equivalent of the six degrees of separation game to see how easily you can join two different automakers together via a mutual third party. But while collaboration is the norm in the industry, there's also a lot of competition. And when one company works with two different firms who are not good friends, things can get difficult. And so it was this week when we learned that Hyundai, which acquired approximately 12% of Croatian EV firm Rimac back in 2019, has effectively been pushed out of the bed by Rimac's other big automotive lover, Porsche. According to the reports, Hyundai will finish its current electric sports car project with Rimac, and then the two companies will part company. Since Porsche and Rimac jointly own Bugatti, it's hardly surprising that Hyundai's been dumped, but that's got to hurt. One of the world's largest oil companies, Shell, made its quarterly earnings report public this week, showcasing Q1 earnings that were the largest since 2008, with an adjusted earnings of 9.1 billion US dollars. Shell has literally been raking it in as families around the world have struggled to be able to afford fuel for their homes and vehicles. And even as oil prices have soared as the consequence of the illegal invasion of Ukraine by Russia, Shell, and I'm going to assume most other fossil fuel companies, have been raking it in. Not only does this highlight the sheer dystopian nature of the fossil fuel industry as it stands today, but it highlights that Shell and others, while acquiring EV charging networks, could be spending so much more on making EV charging more readily available. Sure, $9.1 billion wouldn't buy Elon Musk's Twitter, but it would buy, by my very conservative reckoning, at least 114 
thousand rapid charging stations. Have a regular job and the chances are you get a regular salary. Probably not enough, by the way, given how much inflation has been inflating of late. But if you're particularly high up in a company, you stand to get not only a very good base salary, but also bonuses based on how you or your company does. In the automotive world, some CEOs, like Elon Musk, opt to take a very low annual salary, but then earn very large payouts when certain milestones are met, such as Elon Musk did earlier this year, when Tesla had a really good quarter. And as we learned this week, he's not alone. According to official filings made last week, Lucid Motors awarded CEO Peter Rawlinson 13.8 million time-based units of stock that will be fully vested by the end of 2025, plus 16 million performance-based stock units. The combined value? An eye-watering $260 million. This is despite Lucid delivering just 360 cars during Q1 this year, with Lucid Air prices about to go up in June. Maybe I should have got into the automotive industry, not the automotive journalism industry, eh? We've long pulled the classic face poor moment at some of the ways in which automakers have chosen to advertise EVs over the years. And we've seen everything. Even the Chevy Volt dance. But this week, Ford launched a new ad campaign with a difference that we think is actually quite good. A campaign called What's in the Frunk? Aside from stealing the term frunk and making it look like Ford came up with it, not Tesla, the series of short ads focus on the different things you can carry in the F-150 Lightning's mega power frunk, and also what you can power from it. It's a great series and full of representation, diversity, and unique interesting things you can do with the onboard power that the F-150 Lightning pickup truck has to offer. And it got us thinking, we are hopefully <laughs> going to be getting a Ford F-150 Lightning, assuming the financing works out. And I would love to know what you'd like us to try and power or do with the Frank in our F-150. Leave your thoughts below. And finally, the Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo is a unique creature. Sure, it's based on Porsche's very expensive four-seat electric Grand Tourer, but it also happens to be built as a real off-road capable performance car, complete with lifted suspension and multiple off-road modes. Targeted at more outdoorsy types than the standard Taycan buyer, there's plenty of cool features available, including an integrated bicycle rack. But this week, Porsche went one step further by revealing what it calls the Porsche Roof Tent Camping Experience. No, it's not a tent you can buy for your Taycan Cross Turismo, but rather a holiday experience you can book for a few nights as you travel through the Black Forest in Germany. The entire trip, two nights and three days, will set you back approximately 2,600 US dollars. It's certainly different from most holidays, and if I'm honest, it's something I really want to do. And on that note, we are done for the day, but before I go, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And of course, if you haven't switched yet, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you'll help New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back next week with more awesome content, but until then, enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.